So it's the day after Christmas in the very, very end of 2021. And I'm here trying to take a nap because I have COVID and my whole family has COVID and it's ruined our Christmas and it's just been fun, but it kind of goes to show exactly how you can't plan for everything. So if you checked out my last video on how to keep yourself accountable, then you're definitely going to want to stay tuned because during this episode today, I'm going to be sharing with you my annual recap for 2021. I'm going to go through exactly, you know, what I had planned for 2021 to be, what happened in 2021, including where I'm at right now, and what I'm planning for 2022. And after you watch it, you will hopefully be able to have an idea of how you can use this exact same process for yourself and by learning through my experience, be able to do it yourself. And I, as you could tell, am very, very tired and have COVID brain. So right before I had gotten sick with COVID, I had gone live on my platforms three separate times during the month of December. And I shared with everybody basically the following. I went through an entire live stream where I talked about what I had planned for 2021 to look like. Then I did another one on what happened in 2021, which ironically, looking back on it now, is funny because not even three hours after I had stopped on that live stream was when I found out my daughter had COVID and then we all got it. So the story wasn't over yet, folks. And then the very last one, uh, which at the time of this recording, I still have yet to do, I'm sharing what I'm planning in 2022, which I also have to say too, is an extra added challenge trying to do that while you can't think straight. <laughs> So either way, I wanted to share it with you all here and let's go ahead and dive in. So from here, I kind of wanted to share with you guys what happened. <laughs> so big news at that time was I got married. So I got married on New Year's Eve <laughs> uh, going into the year. So we were really kicking off things uh, in a big, big way. So that was super exciting. In terms of what actions I took towards those goals, whether it be advertently or inadvertently, um, to create that new program that I was looking to kind of reinvent, I interviewed over 50 aspiring entrepreneurs to learn what they felt they truly needed to succeed and create their own business, right? So I worked with a number of people in the year before, uh, who were aspiring entrepreneurs, but I knew I could make the program better. So I interviewed in that in January and February alone, it was 50 people that I interviewed on 30 minute phone calls. As a result of all of these interviews, I completely overhauled that program, Create and Validate, that I referred to in my letter. But the program is now called the Validate Your Biz Blueprint, which is now my signature program and it's one that I'm known for. So as a result of all of that research, I created this improved program and I launched it within that time frame and I launched it to the most clients I ever worked with at any given time, which is pretty damn exciting. So as a result of that, I hit all of the income targets that I had uh, looked to generate within my business. Uh, the most impressive thing I did was I hit that 20 hours a week. So I worked only four hours a day, 20 hours a week. One of the ways I did it was I kept track of everything by using uh, apps like Toggle or Clockify is what I use now, but I logged all of my hours. Best part is because I had rolled all that back, I had all that time that I was looking to spend with both my son and my husband. I had also done a round of the whole 30. If you're new to me and my work, or if you followed me for a long time, you know I'm a big fan of the whole 30, uh, which is an elimination diet, which kind of resets your system. So I did that while pregnant in January and I felt amazing. I looked amazing. Uh, I was glowing at that point in my pregnancy and I uh, got to do a lot of weekends away and basically had fun, which was really the goal of my year. So the Q1 really it was a huge check mark. I achieved just about every single thing <laughs> that I had set out for in Q1. Let's talk about Q2. And again, remember, I was planning this once I got to March 31st. Then I started thinking about, okay, well, what do I want the next 90 days to look like? Here's what happened. 
in Q2. So again, Q2 was April, May, and June. So in April, I launched the evergreen version of my program, the Validate Your Biz Blueprint. It went live literally the week before uh, Isabella was due. <laughs> so I more or less like literally flipped a switch and my whole system went into autopilot in evergreen, which was pretty amazing. So what I had built, I had built a automated lead gen funnel that was um, more or less bringing me leads for this specific program and was able to take applications as well as enroll people without me necessarily having to be as hands-on. So I did the work, it paid off, it went live literally the week before Izzy was born. Now, Izzy's birth was another story. So Izzy was a planned home birth like I had anticipated. Uh, the one thing that I had not anticipated <laughs> was the quick and effortless birth. It was actually quite the opposite. I was in labor for literally a week. <laughs> I had something uh, called prodromal labor, uh, which basically means it's real labor, but it goes on and off. And mine happened for a full week. So in a way, the universe delivered to me my spiritual birth that I was anticipating, but it was spiritual in the way that it really tested me as an individual to see what kind of strength that I had to be able to endure that long of a labor, <laughs> bringing her uh, into this world. So it was absolutely beautiful. Mike was by my side. Uh, she was born, you know, in our house here. Uh, we got, you know, our whole blended family together, uh, six total now. Uh, was finally complete and it was absolutely beautiful. So like I said, everything with bringing Izzy into this world, it went exactly, it couldn't have gone better. I, I was, I'm getting like choked up even just talking about it now. Uh, so one of the things that was great during this time was not only was I taking a full three months off from work, but Mike was as well. So he had paternity leave from his job and he had two full months of paid paternity leave, which we had planned that he was going to take two weeks on, two weeks off. Uh, so that he was going to be available to be home um, with, you know, me and Izzy and the kids and everybody else. So that was a lot of fun. We had a lot done around the house during this time frame while Izzy was napping because you may or may not know newborns nap a lot. So we clean, I cleaned out my wardrobe. I took action on all those things that I imagined in my letter in terms of um, purging, you know, the household. Uh, I also had during this time frame ordered myself a Peloton as kind of my own push present. <laughs> So that was when I had it. It was waiting for me when I finally got the clearance to be able to be physically active again. But I wasn't aware of this yet, but there were signs that I was not going to be able to be physically active for a little bit like I had anticipated. I had some recurring gallbladder uh, issues come to find out disease runs in my family. And I learned that around this time. In terms of my business goes, it continued to generate revenue for me. I had recurring monthly revenue that was already kind of built in from the work I had done the months prior. And, uh, I had completely automated lead generation. I was able to still enroll clients when I felt like it. So if, you know, Mike was home and I had a couple of hours that I knew that I could hop on phone calls to talk to people about the program, I was able to do it on the fly, completely flexibly. I did it and was able to generate revenue and it was pretty damn cool. So <laughs> I was so, so proud of how that worked out. In short, basically my Q2 went exactly how I had envisioned in the letter, um, albeit the quick and easy <laughs> perfect, but it went exactly the way it was intended to. Going into Q3. So Q3 was July, August, and September. How Q3 actually went. So we had an awesome family trip <laughs> to Georgia, uh, which was great. We did have some hiccups. So I don't know how many of you guys follow along in like my Instagram stories and stuff, but we actually arrived at the airport with our four kids in tow. One of them was only like six weeks old. And right when we got to the gate, they told us the flight was canceled. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun, but it turned into a great trip and we got to see family. And I was the first time really out and traveling since the pandemic had happened. During that time, I also tested new routines, right? So a lot of them worked, a lot of them didn't. Uh, I was really finding it challenging to find time for myself, right? Adequate sleep, um, making sure that I had time to check in with my intuition. That was still a struggle and it was something I was still kind of working through. I did start to work again. Like I said, very slow on board in August. It was a challenge, you know, figuring out how do I balance? I'm a full-time caregiver, but I want to take a few hours to be on the phone. And the work that I do is very, you know, forward-facing. I do a lot of speaking with people. I get paid to speak more or less. 
So it was a bit of a challenge being able to, you know, shift into that mode again when I was so used to really only focusing on my daughter and focusing on folks in, in my household, you know, over those three months. I worked on a lot of mindset blocks and stuff with my coach that I had hired during this time frame, you know, and started thinking out what's okay. Well, how, how do I, how can I modify a lot of these things to be able to work for me instead of doing just blanket what everybody else does in their business, right? So a lot of exploration during this time phase. One thing that was actually pretty cool, which is not anticipated at all. Uh, I was contacted by Jess Ekstrom's team. So if you guys haven't heard of Jess, Jess is the founder of Headbands of Hope. And uh, she is a very well-regarded um, female keynote speaker. I had taken her program, um, Mic Drop Workshop, uh, maybe two years before and used the information I learned in that class to land my TED Talk, right? So her team had actually proactively reached out to me. I, it was one of the first emails I saw in my inbox when I came back from maternity leave inviting me to join her new program, which is called Mike Drop Academy. And I had zero plans at all within 2021 to do anything related to my pro speaking business. I, it was on hold at that point. I hadn't spoken you know, professionally since I had been pregnant. There was the pandemic. There was so much stuff going on. But after discussing it with my husband, you know, we were both kind of in agreement that this was a really like amazing opportunity to get you know, high level mentorship with not just her, but everybody on her team. And it made sense for me to kind of jump in to do it. So I did sign up for this program completely not anticipated at all. Um, so I signed up for this and it was going to happen within Q4. One, another thing that was unanticipated, which sucked, was I did wind up having to have my gallbladder removed. So as I mentioned in July-ish, I started having some issues with my gallbladder. I ended up in the hospital once or twice with it. Uh, gallbladder disease runs in my family and come to find out after pregnancy. So it was recommended to me to have it out. So for pretty much the entire month of August and majority of September, I was, you know, out of commission again because I had had my gallbladder removed. So it was just still difficult for me to achieve a lot of what I was looking forward to in terms of my physical health, you know, physical fitness. Also, like I had said too, I had anticipated this in the letter that September was going to be interesting between, you know, my husband, Mike, going back to work and my son going back to school and just all those adjustments with routines and stuff with the new baby. So that did happen. And it, I struggled with it um, because it was very, very difficult for me to find time for myself that I used to very easily have in the morning because it was being you know, taken by Izzy. And that makes sense. And I didn't know it at the time. But I was starting to have these very unrealistic expectations on what it was I should be able to accomplish, uh, even considering having the new baby. So Corey, at this time in her mind, was still thinking, hey, well, I've achieved all of this stuff in the past and I should be able to keep up the same run rate. I just got a baby now. And that's just completely unrealistic, which leads me into what happened in Q4. Right. So let's talk about Q4. Q4 is October, November, December. So let me just put it this way. In October, I had a full on mental breakdown. Full on. Just like I, I'm not even sugarcoating it. I had postpartum depression. I was setting very unrealistic expectations on myself. The accumulated lack of sleep since the baby arrived just completely did me in. So after coming to that realization, it was then much easier for me to articulate what I needed, which I really needed space for myself. There was a few things that uh, I did, you know, with not just myself, but also with Mike's help and my family and other, um, you know, professionals, which I'm going to talk about in a minute to help make that happen. So first is I realized that I had completely unrealistic expectations on my business. I had built it to that point myself and that made sense, but I could not continue to run it full time at the same capacity I did before. So one thing I did that actually articulating it now makes me really freaking proud of myself is I hired a team of four people and got them up and running in like a week. <laughs> so I, I worked as a senior vice president of former roles. So I was able to kind of flex my, my CEO muscles there a little bit. But yeah, I brought a team on and I did it really fast. And my team is awesome. If you guys are watching it today, thank you so much. Uh, love you guys. So I did bring on a team uh, right away. My team's helping me create content. The other thing that I did, you know, due to my, my depression and my, my lack of self-care was I was spending a lot of time online and I didn't realize it. So I was kind of uh, mindlessly scrolling 
and almost like becoming addicted to social media in a way. So one of the things that I did was I hired a digital wellness coach to help me kind of figure out my feelings surrounding it, then led me, you know, to understanding some things about myself, which are rooted in my childhood, which I decided I wanted to kind of take on in therapy um, because it all kind of tied together. So at this point, like I, I mentioned, I hired a coach, you know, specifically to work on digital wellness habits and creating boundaries around my business, you know, because I do run a digital business. And I also enrolled myself back into therapy, working with somebody I've worked with for years and years and years to, um, you know, help explore some things I'd forgotten um, that, you know, being a new mother again, kind of brought back to the surface. Mike jumped in and helping me make sure that we prioritize me getting time to myself. So we started a brand new routine in the morning when we both get up at the same time. We both get up at six. I was sleeping a bit later at that point, but we get up at six. I take time to exercise. I've been using the Peloton. I've been doing yoga. I meditate. I journal. Everything I listed in my letter that I wanted to do, I do that all within that hour. And he helps take care of the baby until she wakes up and is ready to get up. That's been working beautifully. <laughs> I feel much more connected to my intuition and stuff again. And that's been beautiful. The other thing that happened during this time frame was I completed the Mic Drop Academy which was incredible. It was nothing I ever, like I said, anticipated doing. But now going into 2022, I have a formal uh, strategy. I have materials. I've got a team. I've got everything I need to make keynote speaking a major part of my 2022 revenue, which is pretty damn cool. So I know in starting off this year, I was very, very focused on my Validate Your Biz Blueprint program. Going into 2022, you're going to see a lot more from me speaking about keynoting. Um, at, at various events, which I think is really exciting. And it ties into my overall mission, which is to help people recognize and capitalize on their talents in the service of other people, right? And I do this by motivating and inspiring people to take extraordinary action, regardless of what their circumstances is. And keynoting is a great way for me to be able to do that. So super excited. We also had regular date nights, uh, like I mentioned too, with the babysitting as so many different fun holiday activities. You know, just even this past weekend, we took the kids to go see a light show. We had an ugly sweater party with all of our friends. Um, we baked cookies <laughs> with my family. It's been so awesome. And I've been fully present for all of it. So pretty darn amazing. But I know I've shared a lot with you guys so far already. Uh, from the last live stream I did where I talked about what my primary goals were for the year, here's what they were. Again, and we're going to check them off one by one. So in my business, my primary goal was to streamline it. I wanted to create an evergreen lean gen funnel for one signature offer, which I did. I wanted to overhaul, um, overhaul that program, make it the very best on the market and turn it into a hybrid uh, online course group coaching program, which is what I did. And I wanted to work 20 hours a week doing it. Check, check, check. In terms of my relationships, quality time was very important for me in this year. I wanted to take a full three months off maternity leave. Check, did it. I wanted to feel more present with my family, right? For years and years, I struggled with workaholism and this was gonna be the year that I was really gonna dig in and get to the root of it. The thing that's really fascinating to me, kind of recapping everything this way and sharing it with you guys is I see now that a lot of what I experienced in this Q4 directly related to that. Right. So my little mental breakdown in October, it was directly tied with my workaholism, you know, and all these things that I knew at the very beginning of the year were things that I was going to want to address in this year. So the universe kind of delivered what I needed, just not on the timeline that I thought I was going to need it. But truth is, I, I do have a plan going into 2022 where we are addressing it, you know, at the root, you know, through therapy, through coaching, through a number of different things and changing my habits. And um it's something I'm pretty excited about. So I'm going to check that one off too. And in terms of health and wellness, which is very, very important to me too. I wanted an easy pregnancy and delivery, uh, which did <laughs> happen. Uh, did it in that it took me a week to get my baby uh, to be born. But other than that, it went beautifully and exactly as anticipated. Everybody's happy and healthy. Uh, I wanted to be well rested and clear minded. It was a bit of a journey to get here today. But here I am at the very, very end of the year, exactly where I had anticipated being. And I wanted to look and feel good in clothing, which honestly, I do. I feel amazing. I'm probably 10 to 15 pounds heavier than I was before, but I just had a baby and I'm nursing. And I'm very, very happy with that. 
Uh, in terms of finances, that was on my list too. I wanted to build more wealth every month. I wanted to have consistent um, income and revenue, and I wanted to manifest 100K for the year. Uh, which truth was I checked each and every one of those off. The 100K did not just come from my business, just to be transparent. It came from a variety of different revenue sources that I have. Uh, but it looks like I'm on track. I'm within, you know, a few digits <laughs> of that at this point by the end of this year. And the year isn't over yet. And in terms of spirituality, that was important for me too. So I had three focuses for that. I wanted to be fully present in the moment, which it was a process over the course of the year, but I am there. I wanted to have uh, spend time having fun. Fun was my word of the year. So uh, definitely check that off. <laughs> and uh, I also noted I wanted to further develop my psychic abilities. Uh, I am a natural intuitive. And that is something that I still want to continue to work on. But what I've realized, is, and one of the reasons I had such difficulty in the second half of the year was I became so overcome by, you know, doing for other people and not taking care of myself and my own personal boundaries that I lost that connection to myself, right? So by having that hour every single morning for myself now, where I journal, I write, I meditate, I try to go on hikes on a regular basis where I could be quiet in my own thoughts, that helps me tap into it. So in a way I did kind of check that off, uh, but it just wasn't in the way that I'd initially anticipated. So that is it. So that was what happened for me in 2021. Next week, where I'm going to be sharing, going through my goal setting process for 2022. And then going into the new year, I'm going to be dropping these live streams once a month to share with you exactly what happened over the course of the month. Now, here's what's interesting. So in probably within, I'd say, three hours of when I hit stop on the live stream last week, which, you know, I had mentioned too, what an amazing year it was. I had a baby and my business was great and everything was awesome, awesome, awesome. And there was still a week to go in the year and how amazing is life. Literally within three hours of hitting stop on the live stream last week, I found out my daughter has COVID, which then landed, my daughter, by the way, is only seven months old which then landed to me finding out I have COVID, my husband Mike has positive COVID test, my son does, our stepson. It's basically the whole family got it. <laughs> um, it was actually all tied back to an ugly sweater party we had the weekend before last. Basically, everybody who came to our party got it, uh, despite how careful we all have been. And it has been a wild ride. So with that said, today is the first day I am actually feeling good. Uh, I feel like myself. I showered. I put on makeup. So I am super excited to get to share with everybody, you know, what I'm actually planning for 2022. It's actually been nice to have a little extra downtime this week to be able to figure out what that is, even with the foggy COVID brain. So that's really what I'm going to be diving in and sharing with you guys today. But I did want to share, you know, what's happened since the last time we chatted because it really kind of goes to show you that you can plan for everything, but at the same time, you can't. No one ever could have planned <laughs> that my whole family would get COVID, uh, that we would not be able to have Christmas with our families as we had originally were planning. But at the same time, it did ultimately end up kind of playing into some of the goals I had set for myself and how I had intended my 2021 to end. Most importantly, being spending time with my immediate family and getting to do kind of holiday things. So it had ended with us doing, you know, the, our, our ugly sweater party and having friends over and doing the holiday cookie baking and stuff like that. But what's been really, really kind of a silver lining with everything is getting to have time with my immediate family in quarantine right now. Uh, which has been really kind of a blessing in a way. It's forced time for us to, to rest, to reflect. I was going to work this week. Now I'm not, obviously. Uh, so sometimes things happen for a reason. We plan for one thing and something else happens. There's multiple different ways to get to the same destination, uh, which is why I wanted to share that with you guys today. So in sharing my big 2022 goals, Five different pillars, you know, I've got in my relationships, I want to have people um, respect my time better. That's up to me, obviously. I want to have a reliable Corey Lowe and Co team, and I want to prioritize my relationship with myself as much as I do with other people. In terms of my business and my career, I 
intend to have a book deal accepted by the end of 2022. I intend to have my coaching revenue automated so that I can hire a full-time salesperson come the middle of this year. And I want to start booking uh, keynote speaking gigs again, uh, which I had not been able to do due to the pandemic and my pregnancy over the last year and a half to two years. In terms of my health and my wellness, oh, I completely skipped that one. It's really not that important. (laughs) Uh, But I I really, in terms of health and wellness, I want to be really kind of stay attuned to my body again, Um, eating intuitively, not restricting myself, um, very slowly getting back into movement again. So really kind of listening to my body, but it really kind of all those intentions tie into the boundaries, you know, making time for myself and respecting myself. Um, so don't need to go too far into that, but that's on that list because it's one of my priorities. For my finances, to recap, I'm not tracking revenue anymore. I'm just going to be making sure that um, every month I'm doing more than I did the month before. Uh, we're going to be renovating my home office here in the basement. So this whole space is going to get renovated into a formal, uh, office slash studio. And, I'm going to take two months off this summer to be able to spend time with my kids. And I'm going to continue to nurture my gift as a channel. I'm going to protect my intuition and creativity at all costs, continue to be fully present in the moment and consistent through my actions. So hopefully you guys found some value in me sharing this. And there you have it. So hopefully by sharing this process, you found this um, insightful and possibly even motivating to help you do the exact same process for yourself in 2022. And I would absolutely love to know what is your big goal in 2022? I have a link below. Go ahead. You could text me what your big goal is in 2022. And I will personally help keep you accountable by sending you a text message every single week on Mondays to keep you motivated towards taking extraordinary action to make it happen. So I hope that your 2022 ends way better than my 2021 did. (laughs) And uh, if you found this video valuable, definitely be sure to hit like, uh, subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace out guys. Talk soon.